Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Topeak Joe Blow Sport Digital Bike Pump. When it comes to bicycle pumps, the Topeak Joe Blow series is one of the most popular on the market. They offer a wide range of functionality and features for really affordable prices. And today we're going to be looking at one of the most popular models, the Joe Blow Sport series, which has now gone digital. So this includes a digital gauge that lets you have a little more granularity when you're checking your pressures or pumping up your tires. Now you can see packaging wise, pretty simple. We just have these little cardboard backing, some little instructions, as well as a few tools and attachments. I'm gonna go ahead and take the little zip ties off and we'll go over the specs. Retail price for this is $89.95. That's more affordable than the $125 Pro version. This is good for 160 PSI. It has 318 cc's per pump, so pretty good capacity to like fill things up pretty quickly. And something you don't realize is just the size of these things. Uh, even the sport model is fairly large. Go ahead and take off this back pump too, this little zip tie. Now as part of the sport model, you don't get the smart head design, you get the twin hammer. This is a twin head DX5. It's a hammer type. It does both Presta, Dunlap, as well as Schrader with a dual sided design. It also includes an ergonomic padded handle on top to make it easy to use, as well as the included ball and bladder attachments. So you can use the pump on uh, inflatable balls, uh, basketballs, or other devices in your house. Now in terms of what comes in the box, you get the little Allen key. This is a 1.5 millimeter. This is used for changing the battery. The batteries are included. It's a two, uses two CR2032 batteries. You also get the attachment, the bladder attachment and the ball attachment, which can be stored in the, on the gauge head. You get the little instructions for how to replace the batteries, which is, seems overly complicated as well as the basic information on the cardboard backing on how to use the device. Otherwise, really nicely designed and the a classic Topeak yellow and white color scheme. Now that we have all the packaging off, let's check the weight of the pump. So putting on the scale, it comes in at 1.826 kilograms. Now let's take a look at the fit and finish of the Topeak Sport Digital Bike Pump. Let's go ahead and start with the top and we'll take off the nozzle and the hose. Now we'll take a closer look. You can see it has an ergonomic head with a padded design and you see the little indentations for your fingers there. So it makes it really easy to pump. And then you see the hose attachment attaches with the little plastic holders on the side and wraps up and over to hold the nozzle in place. This works pretty well, especially when you're storing it, it won't flop around. Now, if we take a closer look at the nozzle with the Sport Digital, you don't get the Smart Head. Instead, you get the twin hammer design. We actually like this a little bit better. We've used the Smart Head quite a bit. And with this, you have a dual sided design. You can see you have one smaller one on the left and then the bigger one on the right for both Presta, Dunlap, and Schrader valves. It's pretty easy to remember which. You just use the smaller one if you have a road bike. And then to lock it in place, you rotate it 90 degrees and it's actually easier to use than the smart head, which is easy to get your finger caught on. So with this, you simply rotate and place it in and you're done. So pretty simple to use and fairly lightweight. Now let's take a closer look at the hose length itself. You can see it's swivel mounted at the base right underneath the gauge. And this literally makes it easy to place the pump in front or behind your bike without the pump itself falling over. Now the hose length itself is a little bit on the shorter end and you can see here, uh, it doesn't reach that far. So if you have a bike on a rack, you might have to bring it down. But when you're not using the nozzle, it's really easy to flip it over, play, put it in the little holder spots and it'll hold the actual nozzle head down as well. Now let's take a closer look at the main feature here, which is the digital gauge. And this is really nice. This is one of Topeak's first sport digital models and it gives you the additional benefit of an electronic gauge for easier readability. There's only one button here and the button is used to switch between the different units. So if you want metric or imperial units, you can simply click the button and find the units you prefer. 
You don't have to actually press the button to use the pump. Once you start pumping, it will turn on automatically. And the gauge also automatically turns off after a few minutes of non-use. So really easy interaction. And you can see the display is nice and large. So really easy to read even though it's low mounted. Now with the Pro versions, they mount the uh, gauges on the top. Also note there are two uh, CR C2032 batteries and they're underneath here. It's a little bit uh, complicated to replace them. The screws underneath, four screws have to be removed and the bottom removed. You can see here there's also a little rubber uh, protector bumper on the front that prevents it from falling as well as two spots to hold the bladder attachment and the ball attachment. And those actually stay in place really well. So if you ever need them, they're right there. You don't have to go search a bin and you don't uh, less chance of losing them as well. So now let's put the pump to use. I'm gonna take the smaller diameter side of the twin head to put on my Presta valve, slide it on, lock the head in place. It's definitely a two-handed procedure. You don't wanna really bend your valve as they're really easy to bend. Lock it in place. And then you can see the actual tubing is fairly short, so you do have to be fairly close. Uh, if you have it on a wall mount or something, it won't work. And then we start pumping. The strokes are nice and smooth. Uh, the gauge jumps around a bit, and I'll show a little inlay with that. So you can see you actually have to do it. You have to pump, stop, wait, until you get the hang of the, uh, the fact that each stroke is about 3 PSI. And then the feature I really wish I had here was the uh, pressure release valve. So you can see if I go over my desired pressure uh, with these 23 millimeter narrow tires, that'd be about 100. I'd actually have to take this off, adjust it, put it back on, and then check the pressure again and readjust to the exact value. So a little bit uh, tedious. Now let's do a little comparison between the Sport Digital Pump and the previous generation Pro Pump. You can see the Pro Pump here has a nice polished look to it a wider base, as well as the analog gauge that's top mounted. As I mentioned before, for whatever reason, the Pro versions are top mounted. It's also worth noting that the Pro version is quite a bit bigger too. So it's a little bit taller and a little bit bulkier. The analog gauge has a simple uh, rotating dial to highlight the pressure you want, so it's really easy to use. And putting them side by side, you can see they're quite similar, but just different color schemes. The big difference here is the smart head versus the twin head design that you have on the Sport Digital. So this is the lower cost variation, the twin head. And you can see unlike the smart head, which automatically adapts to different valve types, with the twin head, you have to remember which side is which. And you can also see with the smart head, you have a different uh, locking mechanism. It actually folds inward. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's really easy to get your fingers stuck in there. So I almost prefer the twin head uh, they both are a two-handed operation. It's not really uh, easy to do one-handed, but once you have it locked in, they stay in place. It's also worth noting little details that separate these. Uh, you can see the metal surround on the smart head. Looks a little more premium than the plastic ones on the twin head. And that's one way to distinguish between the pro and the non-pro versions. Uh, the other thing to look at is the little pressure release button. And this is a really nice feature that the pro versions have. So if you overshoot the pressure, you simply press that side button and that'll release some pressure at a controlled amount. It's a really nice feature that you realize you really like once you have it. So it's not unfortunate not to see on the Sport Digital. They do have it on the uh, Pro version, uh, the Pro Digital pump, but that costs a little bit more money. Now let's go over the pros and cons of the Sport Digital pump. What we like about it is the excellent build quality as a lot of Topic products, they put a lot of effort into the paint, fit, and finish, so everything feels really well designed and premium. We also like the twin head nozzle. It's really easy to use and lock, even though you have to remember which side is which, as it's not a, as smart as the smart head, which automatically works on all three valve types. Uh, we found the locking me mechanism to be easier to use and less prone to getting your fingers stuck in it. We also like the swivel-mounted hose attachment. It was really easy to use, and it also prevents the pump from falling over as you uh, move the nozzle around. Some of the cons of the pump is the fact that it has a very short uh, hose length. 
We found it a little bit too short to reach some bikes on, especially on a wall mount, so we had to bring them down. Also, the digital ga gauge readout kind of jumps around a bit. So every time you pump, it'll overestimate and then settle down. So we found we had to kind of wait as we uh, approach the desired pressure, so it's a little bit inconvenient. And with the digital design, it's more obvious than an analog gauge. Also, the base isn't as wide as the previous models, which is makes it a little less usable. Uh, we really prefer the wider foot and the grippier pads on the previous Pro version. Taking everything into account would give the Sport Digital Pump an 8.4 out of 10. It's a well-built and easy-to-use pump. We just found that the digital gauge kind of jumped around and that we actually preferred some of the previous generation designs uh, versus the current updates. But if you're looking for a digital pump at a more affordable price point, the Sport Digital is definitely a great option. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.